Hey everyone, welcome to The Rock Report. I'm Lydia. And I'm Sam. Today in the North Dakota House of Representatives, the controversial bill, which has been portrayed as making it legal to run over protesters with your car, failed 50 to 41. But even the lawmakers who voted no disagree with civil rights groups who say that this legislation challenges First Amendment rights. We talked to the author of this bill to see exactly how it got so controversial, as well as several other lawmakers to see if a vote against this bill was a vote in favor of the protesters. First, let's start off with exactly what this bill would have done. So, if this bill had passed, the law would read, A driver of a motor vehicle who unintentionally causes injury or death to an individual who is intentionally obstructing vehicular traffic on a public road, street, or highway is not guilty of an offense. It moves the bar a little bit on, on who's, uh, somebody's got to initiate that action. And what it does do is if somebody comes up, uh, is on a roadway intentionally, uh, they, the burden of proof moves to them to show why they were up there. So we did a lot of research on this and that shift in burden of proof is actually a huge deal. It means that instead of the driver having to prove that they hit the person unintentionally and that the pedestrian was in the road illegally, now the pedestrian has to be the one to prove that they were legally in the road and that the driver hit them intentionally. So if I'm standing in the middle of the road intentionally and you hit me in the courtroom, I have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you hit me intentionally. Exactly. So under this law, all the driver would have to do to escape any kinds of fines or charges would be to cast a little bit of doubt on whether or not they intentionally ran into someone. So given how controversial this bill was, some people were surprised that almost half the legislator voted yes on this bill and that it was such a close vote. We talked to Rick Becker, one of the yes votes, about why some representatives supported this legislation. You had people that thought, well, uh, some additional protection, even if they're small, warrants a yes vote on the bill, which is a good reason to vote yes. Or you may have some people that are feeling um, exasperated with the whole no dapple thing and, and are just like, yeah, you know, to, to hell with no dapple, we're, we're passing all these bills, you know. The no votes, by and large, didn't vote against this because they felt like it was infringing on people's right to protest, but because they felt like it was unnecessary legislation. But right now, if you had a group of people up on the highway blocking traffic and somebody came up over a hill and they could not get stopped and they hit into those people, um, already the law would be on the side of the person that was in the accident because the people that were in the middle of the road um, as, as pedestrians would already be the ones that were at fault. And so the law didn't serve any purpose. Um, and you don't pass laws that aren't going to serve a purpose. Another reason they voted no is in response to the huge amount of negative media coverage this bill caused when it was first proposed last month. The other reason would be is fear of the, of, uh, I guess, national opinion. I you know the whole spin about running people over and, and uh, having having this sort of redneck uh, mob sort of mentality. I think people wanted to stay away from that. It's important to remember that although this particular bill failed, there are several other bills dealing with the DAPL protesters that have made it through the House and are going to the Senate to be voted on soon. Stay tuned for our next video where we'll be addressing why there has been such a huge surge in this type of legislation in North Dakota, as well as the legal implications for putting protesters in the same category as terrorists. For the most part, our citizens feel intimidated by what's been going on and stuff. When you look at the definition for protest, that's what's described, a lawful act to bring attention to a cause and to promote that cause by bringing people's awareness to it. When you look at the definition for terrorism, that's an unlawful act that's perpetrated to try to further a political agenda or movement. 